Hello there everybody, welcome back to Kubrick and to the second episode of Building the Falcon's Nest. These past two weeks I've been working hard on the rock work I've started in the first episode, so that will be the main focus of this update, but that's not all I've prepared for you guys. We got some new parts, a couple of ideas and some other cool stuff to talk about, so I hope you guys are excited because I definitely am. But before we get into all of that, go ahead and smack that like button and subscribe to my channel if you end up enjoying this episode. But with all that said, let's get started right now. And to even be able to make any progress since the last time you saw the mock, I had to order a lot of dark grey slopes because like I said in the last episode, I've used up all my 2 and 3 brick high slopes making that preview part of the rock work. I managed to find a very good deal on Bricklink in a fairly new store, but I immediately loved what I received. Of course I got my 400 slopes in a great price, but I also got some nice freebies with the order and as we all know that is always something heartwarming in opening a package like that. Now all I had to do is put the bricks in some containers to make my building a bit easier, organize the parts I need for the next stage of the rock work and we could finally get to some serious building. So we're starting in the same place that we left the mock previously and like I said I first wanted to make the angled part of the island but unfortunately that wasn't an easy task so I gave up in making it on camera. There was just too much experimenting with connections, breaking them apart and trying a different approach to make it look good on video, but at least to give you a glimpse of the techniques being used and the progress done, I made a couple of work in progress photos so you can see how the rock work actually grew in this part. The worst part was making the corners as much unnoticeable as possible, so I had to try out many different techniques in order to get the look I wanted. There were of course some gaps I had to fill in, but nothing that a little seaweed won't fix, right? And I have to say that even though I spent a couple of evenings putting it all together, it was definitely worth the effort because the angled rock work looks totally great in the end. And with that part out of the way, it was finally time to get some more regular rock work done, so here I made an effort to shoot some speed builds while stuck in the bricks so that you can actually see how this technique of rock building actually works. Not that there is something complex here that you couldn't do yourself, but maybe someone will find it useful. And besides, there is always something soothing in watching other people build, don't you think? As I was stacking all of the slopes, I started thinking about the idea I told you about previously to include some kind of a cave underneath the water surface with a dungeon inside. At first, I was thinking about it in terms of saving slopes, but since I've got a huge delivery of those, now I just want to make it as best I can with a lot of details inside. But the further I went with the slopes, I came to realize that I should change the plans a little bit and that is because of two reasons. One is that there is not much space here available to make some big and nice looking cave with a lot of details and second is that it would make building the water around it way harder. So I think what I will do here is take a suggestion from one of my viewers to maybe make a small underwater passage for the enemy to infiltrate the fortress unnoticed. It would be a small cave entry of some sorts with maybe an enemy spy swimming inside of it. And then something unavoidable happened. I ran out of these little slopes, so I guess I won't be able to finish the rock work now, but I've already ordered a few of those, so I'm guessing it's just a matter of days until the bricks arrive. 
So now what I did here was finishing up the top line of the rock work that we just assembled on which I am going to place the plates and tiles representing the water. I needed to adjust the angle part of the rocks covering them with tiles and making straight attachment points for placing the water surface in only these two directions so that I won't have any gaps between the water tiles. And after that it was time to fill out the holes in the inner skeleton and make it ready for the next stage of construction. Here of course I used some Duplo bricks as a bottom foundation and then cover it nicely with bricks and plates, just to have more or less a flat surface that I can build on. With that done I could finally work on the waters surrounding the island. So I started with making these simple contraptions by just connecting some trans clear plates and then covering them with trans blue tiles. This may not be the strongest connection, but to be honest it doesn't have to be. By itself at least, because later on I will connect them in weakest places with some of these rounded inverted tiles. I'm trying not to stay too committed to this look because all of that will probably slightly change when I move on to the upper rock work, but for now it gives me a nice idea on what I need to do further on. Okay, with that I've just run out of transclear plates, so I'll have to order another batch of them to finish the whole water surface, because we still have rock work on the back side to cover, and I also need to widen the left side a bit. No rush with that though, since there is still a bridge to build here, but I have to keep that in mind while placing my next order. And speaking of which, I just received a second haul while making this video, so why don't we quickly check out what we got here before we wrap this up. Not much in this package, because I only got a couple of slopes for the rock work, a couple of weapons and accessories, but that wasn't the main focus here. I got this order mainly because of this one hood. As you know, I need to make a couple more archers for manning the walls, but these hoods are so rare in Poland, that it's a real treasure hunt when it comes to buying those. But thankfully, I got at least one new archer in the team. Oh, and since I found one more helmet in my collection, we will also have one more crossbowman to go along with him. I just need to buy some more weaponry in the right color. But for that, I'll still have time in the future episodes, which should be premiering every two weeks. So if you don't want to miss them, just click on the bell button to get notified each time I post a video. As for today, we are done with all the jibber jabber, so thank you guys for watching and for all of your likes and comments, and I'll see you next time here on Cube Brick. And until then, remember to keep it bricking!